We're going to be shooting this today. My new toy. Let's unbox. This is not the simplest thing. Okay, let's let's look at look at the box first. This is my second one. I got the first one and it completely malfunctioned and something happened with the trigger and I got a new one on warranty. Let's see if we can see that serial number. Well, my last one was uh, 553 and this one is 661. It's made in 1500, I believe. So they were both in, uh, well, 7021. So, yep. You get these things that nobody reads. Warranty, warning. This actually contains some interesting information. Maybe I'll take some pictures and add those at the end of the video. Probably not. Let's change hands. This is the gun. It's... Uh, This part is metal, all the internals are metal, this is plastic. You take this piece off, you can load your 12 gram CO2, which I have already done because I'm recording this after the video you're about to watch. Then, put the magazine that jumps clear out. It comes with a 30 round magazine which you can insert backwards and it will damage it. You open it from the back side with two hands. I'm gonna have to. There, you put the bullets down and Unlike the SIG MCX, oh, it's very fiddly this magazine, it rolls this way in the gun but it also gets stuck up there, so ideally you use two hands to roll it. Anyway, there we go, no, now I can roll it the wrong way. Uh, the 30 rounder is not as good a magazine as the 20 rounder. Let's jump into the video, shall we? Yeah, all those things apply. Let me start talking about it. 12 kilos gammo. 1,6 meter. Guys, so let's go through some of the general ergonomics. That should prove All right, let's do 10 JSB exact 8.44 ray. Out, you want in. This is the injection side of the gun. What happens here is as the round is 
fired, the bolt comes back, it takes the empty case, and actually feeds it into this ejection port. It actually sits in here for a moment. And as the bolt slides forward to chamber a new round, it also works as the ejector, open automatically, and the spent casing will eject out of here. What's interesting is that the bolt carrier group is not only coming back to put a spent casing into this, but it's also working as the ejector as it goes forward to eject it. This means that when you fired your last round and pulled the bolt back, there might be a See that's ten. Whoa. Look at the outlier of three there. So uh, second round fired gave me a failure to feed ten properly, bullets. and that seems to be related to a failure to properly eject. That cartridge case should be fully inside the ejector plate, and it's not. So let's go ahead. That out. There's our failed to eject or extract case. And when I pulled this off, then the bolt went forward. The chamber is empty. That was the last really bullet. Matter, because the way it checks forward, you can switch shoulders and you don't need to do this. But if I want to turn this into the right hand configuration, oh. it's a piece of tape. This is leaking. You need to make sure that the bolt is forward. Then you just take a spent cartridge case or anything. Can you hear? Pull this, pull this little plate out. The injection port. Turn it's over. leaking. The other one off. And literally, do nothing more than swap them. But this one here, cell function where. The brass, the empty case, has not quite I haven't had a single malfunction uh, so uh, far. Slide cover. So I can pull the mag, and what you'll see is Let's the round not down. You know, the bolt has started to push it JSP out. Group. But because the bolt has not been able to push the empty case all the way in, the bolt has jammed Luke's at this position. You can see that in the charging handle? This is non reciprocal back to here, that tells you the bolt is sitting like at this position. Um, in order to do it, is that was easy. When I pull it off, and it's in the issue here is this. I haven't put the magazine in. So this would be 15 bullets per target. One moment earlier in the video, we did 
Same problem. One bullet is protruding a little bit too much. All right, now that we seem to have gotten through the break in and everything's working, now we're going to go ahead and just crank the gas system back a little bit with my name. Because once it's all broken in, we should be able to reduce it from the highest setting. That should reduce the felt recoil. We'll just have to gun on this thing is really hot after dumping like 100 rounds. So, Nothing here happened. is, here's our gas port. We are currently at 6. Right at 1 notch, 2, 5. Is there a Alright, we have a stock case, which I suspect is wolf, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and I forgot to bring the proper cleaning nope. rod, so instead, I uh, guess uh, it's not gone, rod, but we're leaking. Not leaking anymore. There we go. Yep. That one round of wolf tore right through the rim. That might actually work on the lower okay, gas. Let's do the last one. This fire we'll left side. Dead trigger. malfunction in there. Here, take a look in the loading port, or the injection port. Well, let's take a try. So this is gas setting 5 with M80 ball. We have our magazine. Failure. We have a fired round that got jammed into something. And then Failure. we have a round that got... Done? Partially ejected. That almost, to me, looks wow. like uh, it didn't cycle back far enough. All right, we are now going to try some PMC commercial. Maybe not like that. Maybe that this likes that ammo better than the Milser. The ammo and bullets are left. Well, that works nicely. Alrighty, now we're going to try this with. Wolf on gas setting this. 5. Given that it just tore the rim right off, a little less gas pressure on bolt coming back, a little less bolt velocity might, might work. Alright, uh, we'll just start with Wolf. Uh, I'm good. So 
smells like we're low on gas. We're definitely low on gas. You can yeah. turn the rim off, it just didn't cycle. So with Walt, uh, Hurtenberg M80 surplus. Let's go! Five bullets! Fast! Fail, fail. Alright, so we don't, there are no reliable gas settings with M80 ball. I am going to say at this point, at least this rifle... No, one of them was not fail. Yeah. Only one bullet left in the magazine. Uh, Alright! Let's see, PMC worked, MagTech did not. M80 ball did not, Wolf did not. American Eagle did. American Eagle did. We didn't try PPU. Uh, you know, there's endless brands. Uh, let's collect. Uh, uh, All right, I'm curious about something here. I've been trying to, to quantify the recoil on the MDR, and it feels heavy. No, I mean, maybe that's oh, concussion from the muscle being close to your face, but I kind of think it's just a hard recoiling gun, especially if you set the gas system high enough to know that it's going to be reliable. So, as a comparison, we have a G43. This is 8mm Mauser, and it's running 198 grain uh, Yugoslav sniper. So, it's a heavier bullet by about 35%. Um, this should have as much or more kinetic energy as a 7.62 Nato. And I'm curious, we're going to fire five rounds offhand yeah. with this, and then five rounds with the MDR. And just see which one this feels last like it's one actually got more functions. functions was the ultra shorts in the 30 round magazine. And as you can see, we got one bullet left there. Yep, that. Now, the got five rounds. Of so this was this the first is, target that we shot. Uh, this is PMC 150 grain. Pretty, pretty good actually. Very gas hungry. Second one. Of which three fire before it malfunctions. We've got outliers. Gas and this was the last. Before I tell you four. what my thoughts are, Look let's get the Carl outlier to do the same there. Thing on one. All right, wow. so we're gonna try the same comparison analysis that he had just did. I've got five rounds of PMC commercial ammunition. Men, vad du ska ner. Put the gun down. Get the G43. Go. Pass. Five rounds, 198 grain M75 Yugoslavian sniper ammunition. And we're good to go. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so exact. Which one has more recoil? Yeah. MDR. Yeah. This G43 was lighter and easier to shoot. It felt like a longer recoil impulse to me. It was spread out over a little more time. Mm -hmm. It was a little more of a whoosh back, where this was more of a sharp kick. Well, there's some reality to that. I mean, look at what's going on here. You've got a short stroke gas system, and you've got all of this operation of cycle before this goes forward. This is a short stroke gas system, too. Yeah, you know, I guess maybe what's going on here is this is striking the rear harder. I think this has less, I haven't measured it, but I suspect this has a little less distance to travel. Uh -huh. um, and it may, it may have a little less reciprocating mass as well. Which is actually more energy than what we're shooting with the, with the 308. Recoil's less than that. Now, fair comparison, no, it's not a bullpup. This is a bullpup. There's lots of things going on. Oh, there's no measuring. It's not blind. It's, it's a totally bogus, non scientific experiment. Yes. But my feeling, especially when shooting the MDR prone, was that it did eat. It was a, it was a heavy, and this is on gas setting 4, which is, you saw, we had one malfunction with TMC on 4 for you, so really it should bump up to 5, probably should have been on 5, which will give you a higher recoil impulse than 4. It ran okay for me on 4 with all 5 rounds I fired, but you had one malfunction, so that means that you're not even getting the full recoil impulse that you would get on the gas setting you should have. And it also says something about the fact that, well, it's got gas settings, what, 1 through 6? Yes. On six, we're seeing unreliable performance with M80 Milser ball, whether it's Hurtenberg or right. um, Malaysian. So M80 ball is kind of, at least for us, off the table. Yeah, yeah. Commercial ammo is not off the table. Four is iffy. Four with 160 